respected, bro respected brothers and sisters, uh, viewers, welcome back to another episode of Life from Karbala, uh, where we, inshallah, will discuss the most emphasized topics within the Holy Quran. Over the past few days, uh, we have discussed the aspects that will enhance our spirituality as well as bring us closer and uh, and bring us and transform us to the people who Allah and the Ahlul Bayt love and respect. Uh, first, let's welcome our very respected guest who has joined us over the past few nights, Sayyid Hussain Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Alaykum as How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, Sayyidina, tonight, inshallah, we'll discuss a very significant uh, topic, which is the purpose behind entering heaven, if you will. If th This revolves around everything. <clears throat> Speeding to good deeds. What does it mean in, in, uh, in this perspective? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. There is two kinds of people. One kind of people uh, they're slow. They're lazy. They take their time with everything. Whether it's religious matters, life matters, business, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to getting ready to go out of the house, uh, preparing the food. Some people, are, it's in their genes to be slow. They take their time with everything. They're not worried. Uh, they procrastinate. Mm -hmm. They leave everything till the end. There's another group of people that are, no, they, they seize the opportunity. If they see an op a good opportunity, they seize it right away. They don't let a good opportunity pass them. They're quick in everything. When it comes to religious matters, they're the first. They're the first to pray. They're the first to go to Hajj mm -hmm. when they have the means. They're the first to join the battle, for example, against ISIS and perform jihad which is self-defense. Mm -hmm. When there's a good business opportunity, they're the first to join. They know how to seize the moment and make use of their time. They don't kill their time. They don't waste their time. We see an, we see an emphasis in the Quran about being quick and not being slow. About seizing the moment, seizing the opportunity right away. Be quick, rush, rush to good deeds. Be the first, as opposed to taking your time, be lazy, and letting all opportunities pass by without even knowing. Now there's a saying that I always used to hear while growing up in America. It says, you snooze, you lose. Mm -hmm. Those who snooze, yeah. Those who wake up and then go back to sleep again and say, you know, I have a, another 10 minutes, another 10 more minutes. He sleeps another 10 minutes. He wakes up, he says, another 15 minutes, another 20 minutes. Before you know it, he slept three hours, four hours. The time of, of work has gone. You snooze, you lose. That, this is exactly what Islam believes in. If you snooze, you lose. If you wait, if you take your time, if you want to be slow, you lose. Be quick, rush. Significant because Imam Ali Nabi Talib, peace be upon him, he says, uh, opportunities are like clouds. If they pass you once, they'll never come back. They'll never, they'll never come back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, states in the Quran, الخيرات, and be speedy to good deeds. Uh, what are in the significance, uh, sorry, the emphasis of the verse in the Quran on uh, doing good deeds? We have several verses, mm -hmm. at least, at least six, at least six, there might be even more, but at least six verses in which they emphasize on speeding, rushing, rush to good deeds, speed to good deeds, not just do good deeds. You see, the Quran could have easily just said do good deeds. No, the Quran says speed to good deeds. Don't let others 
Don't let others beat you to it. Don't let others beat you to it. You, you take the initiative. In one verse, Allah SWT says, أُولَٰئِكَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ Regarding righteous people, virtuous people. أُولَٰئِكَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَهُمْ لَهَا سَابِقُونَ Those people are those who speed to good deeds. You see them, they're always the first. Have you seen some mosques? When you go a bit late, you see the first row, the people that have come to the first row, they don't come last minute. They're there 30 minutes, 45 minutes before salah. They've already reserved their spot for salah. In another verse, Run! Run and do good deeds. Speed to good deeds. Don't wait. Don't say, you know, I have tomorrow, I have another week yeah. to do this, to do that. What's the rush? There will always be orphans. Yeah. Why should I sponsor an orphan now? Why should I join jihad now? ISIS is always going to be there in Iraq. And whenever I feel threatened, awesome. then I'll think of joining the fight against yeah, ISIS. When it's too late. Yeah. When it's too late. No, the Quran says, you rush. And another verse, فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ Again, the same expression. فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا You will all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, speaking about prophets. Mm -hmm. Speaking about prophets. In Surah Al-Anbiya, the Quran tells us that some prophets, their dua was accepted. وَنُوحًا إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ وَلُوطًا وَإِبْرَاهِيمًا Several prophets who prayed to Allah and Allah answered them. And then this verse comes. A summary. What was so special about these prophets? إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ These prophets, they would rush to good deeds. They were the first people to, to perform these good deeds. They wouldn't snooze. They wouldn't wait. They wouldn't take their time and relax. There's some people that have the culture of take your time. Mm -hmm. I hear this word all the time. Take mm -hmm. your time. Take your time. No, no worries. Take your time. No. Who said you could take your time? Time is not yours for you to take. Mm -hmm. Ta time is given to you. And at, at any moment... It could be taken away from you. Seize the opportunity. No worries. Who said no worries? Worry. Worry because you don't know what's next. What's next. And another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the early migrants and helpers. Ansar. As-sabiquna al-awwaluna min al-muhajirin wa al-ansar wa al-ladhina attaba'uhum bi ihsanin Allah is pleased with the early migrants, the pioneers, the pioneers, the first, those who first migrated. Because the migration from Mecca to Medina, it was in stages. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah migrated, but there were some that migrated afterwards. Not everyone migrated with Rasulullah. Some, they still wasn't sure should they leave their homes, their land. Uh, their businesses, their money, and come all the way to Medina. They weren't sure. They wanted to wait for the outcomes. Allah praises those that came in the beginning, that didn't wait to see the outcomes. They created the outcomes. They created the outcome. You know, I see a lot of people. I ask them, don't you want to move to Iraq? Mm -hmm. You know, this is a country that needs help. It needs the help of every single citizen, even those that are sitting outside. You're an engineer, come help. Your country needs you. You're a lawyer, come help. You're a doctor, you're most in need in yeah. this country, come. You know what some of them say? They say, let's wait. Yeah, let let's wait, see. let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, things are not that great in Iraq. Uh, every day there's war, there's bombings, there's terrorism. Let's see what happened. Let's see the results, the outcome, 
and then we'll consider moving and coming and helping this country rise on its feet. This is the mentality of someone who's lazy, mm -hmm. someone who's opportunistic. Someone who's opportunistic. Why do I say that? Because they see where the tide is. Mm -hmm. If it's a good tide, if things are going well in Iraq, if business is good, land, uh, the prices are well, we'll go. Otherwise, we're sitting here. I'm sitting comfortably here in Europe, in Canada, in Australia, in the U.S. These people are not making any sacrifice. It's unfortunate. They don't take the initiative. They don't take the initiative. To, to, to bring that. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the early migrants, mm -hmm. those who left their homes, those who went to Medina, and they had no clue what was going to happen. Was Rasulullah going to succeed in establishing an Islamic nation or may, they, they had no idea what the future was uh, what, what was awaiting them in the future maybe they could have been massacred mm -hmm. killed their families would have been killed no they take they seize the opportunity they made a sacrifice and they were the pioneers they rushed Allah is pleased with them. Of course, this is another story. Is Allah pleased with all of the Sahaba or a specific group? That's another story that we'll leave for another topic. What I'm emphasizing on is being speedy, speedy rushing, mm -hmm. being the pioneer. Being the pioneer. Even now in Iraq, history will remember some who came 20 years after the fall of Saddam. And then we'll remember those who came 10 days after the fall of Saddam to help with the reconstruction process. Came to build, to help those who made a sacrifice. The same way that historians remember those who were the pioneers in this stage, mm -hmm. Allah remembers the pioneers in that mm -hmm. stage. And another verse, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةً عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ Rush! To the forgiveness and mercy of your Lord. Rush, be the first to enter heaven. And another verse. This is beautiful. This verse is beautiful. In Surah Al Waqa'ah, Wasabiqun Asabiqun. You see, the, the, these two words <coughs> have been repeated twice. Wasabiqun Asabiqun. Those who rush, will rush, rush. What does that mean? Emphasis. Ah. It, it has another meaning. That those who rush to good deeds in this life will rush to paradise in that life. Because on the day of judgment, there's a line. There's a line to enter paradise. If you want to have a VIP pass to enter quickly and rush to paradise, you have to rush to good deeds in this life. Those who rush to good deeds in this life, to good deeds, to pray, for dua, to help an orphan, to help religious projects with your money financially, you'll be the first to enter paradise in the next life. As a result, as a result to that, uh, right after it says, those who will be the close ones to Allah SWT in the paradise. In the paradise. In the paradise. Yes. That's how Allah shows the relationship. Mm -hmm. Be quick here, you'll be quick there. Thus, we see these verses that emphasize rush. Rush. Don't take your time. Be quick. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of opportunities, I mean, on a night like this, the respected viewers, uh, they know it's the night of Friday, it's the Jum'ah. And one of the best deeds that anyone can do in this night is uh, to uh, visit the Imam Hussain. Visit the Imam Hussain, peace be upon him. I mean, you see the pilgrims, mashallah, it's packed here. SubhanAllah. Thousands, thousands. Alhamdulillah. Even though they were fasting, even though it's very hot. Yeah. Even though, you know, people are still scared of the whole yeah. security situation and all that. But you see thousands. And, and they, they don't say, oh, we'll come in the next Thursday. 
Allah says in the Quran, "Wa taqul li shayin nifana ki ghadan." Billa anisha. Don't say I'll do something tomorrow, tomorrow, because you never know when tomorrow, what's in for tomorrow. Or let's wait until it's things safe. in Iraq yeah. are fixed, and then we'll come to visit Imam Hussein, as many people say. Yeah, but what's the significance behind being speedy? Allah SWT emphasizes on being quick mm -hmm. for several reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, no one knows how long they will live. Yeah. No one knows. Are we going to live for another year? Are we going to live for another 10 years, 20 years? You don't know. 10 days. Or 10 days. Yeah. Seize the opportunity. You see a good deed now, do it now because if you wait till tomorrow, you don't know if you'll be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You don't know. We've seen many people. We have, we had a lot of friends. They had a lot of hope. They had a lot of plans for the future. But Israel stopped those plans. Yeah. You ruined the plans for them. Because death could come at any moment and you leave this world without good deeds. Let's seize the opportunity. <clears throat> As long as we're here and now and we're alive and we're capable, let's seize the moment. Yeah, take advantage. The hadith says, uh, naam, seize opportunities, of, uh, seize five, five things five. before five other things. Abu Dhar. This is a hadith by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Dhar. Take opportunity of five things before five, before five other things. One is hayatika qabla mawtik. Take the opportunity of your life before your death. Before your death. We don't know how long we're, yeah. we're going to be alive. Thus, you haven't been to Hajj. You're financially capable. Go. Yeah, yeah, Go cool. sign up now. A person who dies without going to Hajj at the time of death will be given two options. We'll be given two options. Do you want to die as a Christian or do you want to die as a Jew? Meaning that you will not die as a Muslim. You lived all your life as a Muslim, but at the time of death, you'll be forced to convert. You'll be forced to convert to another religion. Allah will say, I don't want you. Because you were able to go to Hajj and you didn't. Seize the opportunity. I see a lot of youth, a lot of youth, they're, they're financially capable. But this, they decide on delaying Hajj. Even old people. Even old people. Not just youth. Even old people. They reached their 40s and 50s when you ask, have you meant the Hajj? And they're wealthy. They say, oh, no, when, when I grow a little bit older. Hassan. I know a scholar. Mm -hmm. He says, I went to visit someone who was dying. Mm -hmm. His relatives told me that mm -hmm. he's dying. Come, he wants to write his will. Can you come and please help him? I said, okay. I said, I went and sat. I told him, how are you Hajj? He said, uh, don't call me Hajj. I have, I've never been to Hajj. Mm -hmm. He's over 70 years old. He's about to die. He's never been to Hajj. And he's extremely wealthy. Extremely wealthy. After thir sitting 30 minutes, he said, I was waiting for him to say his will. He didn't. So he said, I discovered that he, he, d he didn't want to write his will. But his family would, wanted to encourage him to write a will. So I told him that, you know, it's recommended for a person to write his will. He said, those who want to die, write their will. I don't want to die. Who told you that I'm going to die or uh, I want to die? He said, well, even if you don't want to die, even young people, it's good for them to write their yeah. will. He said, no, I'm not going to write my will. Inshallah, I'll be better. My health will become better. Why are you... Uh, Wishing me death. I told him, I'm not wishing you death. But it's good to write your will. He said, no. He didn't write his will. He didn't even write that if I die, let someone go to Hajj on my behalf. Yeah. Thus, there's some people that delay Hajj. She doesn't want to wear hijab, so she says, let me delay Hajj until I get married, and then I'll go to Hajj. Why? Well, Seize the opportunity. Why? You don't know that next year if you're going to be alive. Death is not just for the old people, for 90 and 80 years old people. Death can be for the young as well. 
We see that. I mean, it's a, and we see that with our own eyes. Yeah. But we don't learn. That's the problem. We don't learn. We don't take. We don't take it as a lesson. Thus, you haven't paid Hajj. Pay it today. If you haven't, I'm sorry. If you haven't paid Khums, pay it today. If you have missed Salah, make it up now. Now. Don't wait. Many people, many people, they've missed Salah. At least the early days of puberty when they became Balagh. Women become Balagh at the age of nine. Many of them didn't take Salah seriously. Now, make it up. Yeah. Young boys that became Balagh at the age of 12, 13, 14. I'm sure some of them did not take their Salah seriously the first couple of days. Make up that Salah now. Salah that you've missed. Don't wait. Don't wait. You don't know how long you have. Fasting. If you've missed fasting, make it up as soon as possible. You don't know how long you've, you have. Rush. This is one. This is one of the reasons why Allah tells us to rush and speed to good deeds. Mm -hmm. Two. The thawab is greater. Yeah. It's a greater reward. Imam Sadr salam was asked about he who prays on time and he who prays at the end of time, at the end of the time. For example, Dhuhr is at 12. Those who pray at 12 and those who pray right before sunset. What's the difference in thawab? He said the difference to make it's a, it's a metaphoric, but to make it, the Imam was giving him an answer that he would understand. He said the difference in size of the reward is like the size of a cow and the size of a small bird. The size of a small bird. Is there any relationship? That's the difference in reward. He who prays beginning of the time, right at Adhan time, his reward is this amount. He prays at the end, his reward is this amount. There's a difference in reward. Those who join the fight against ISIS, Daesh, those who fight the enemy, those who attack us and attack our lands and attack our families. The religion. And religion yeah. and our sacred monuments. Those who join the first have one reward and those who join the last. The last. And the only reason why they join is because, for example, they hear there's, they're paying good salaries. Or because he sees the enemy at his doorstep, he's yeah. forced to fight. There's a difference in the reward. There's a difference. There's a, there will be a difference in the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even the effect, the effect of that action. Yeah. Salah has an effect on us. It has a spiritual effect. Believe me, the salah that we pray at the beginning of its time has a much bigger spiritual effect the adhan is at 12, you pray at 12. The, the spiritual effect that you receive from it is different from the prayer that you pray yeah. right before sunset, when you rush, Definitely. when you're just trying to get rid of your salah, just, just right before sunset. The spiritual effect is different. If you don't care about the reward, you look for the spiritual effect, the spiritual effect is yeah. different. And three, you might miss the opportunity. Yeah. Maybe not with death. The first was death. Third, you'll miss the opportunity. Right now, this year you could go to Hajj. You just graduated from college, for example. You don't have a family. You don't have children. You haven't started a big business. This year, and you're financially capable. Seize the opportunity and go to Hajj. Yeah. Next year, you might be busy with a business. Maybe you'll be busy with an illness. Maybe you'll be busy. Maybe you won't have a passport. Maybe the Saudi government won't issue a visa, for example. These things are very much possible. Very much possible. It won't be feasible for you to, to go to Hajj. See, this is an opportunity now. Right now, you can sponsor several orphans. You have the money. Mm -hmm. Do it now. Maybe next year you'll go bankrupt. Maybe next year the economy will go down. We saw this. We saw in some countries how the economy went down. Yeah. Right now in Iraq, didn't the dollar go up and the Iraqi dinar come down? Yeah. And a lot of people are complaining about this. Even in Europe. Even mm. in Europe. Yeah. The economic 
situation. It's terrible. In the yeah. United States of America, same thing. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I remember, most of our Islamic centers in America, they were suffering financially. Yeah. People were not donating. Why? Because there was an economic crisis. Well, before you follow into an, fall into an economic crisis, make an investment for your akhirah. Yeah. Sponsor an orphan. Give to a charity. Help your local Islamic center. Help your TV channels. If there's hospitals, clinics, support, support. This money that you have now, tomorrow, might not be with you. You might go bankrupt. Even supporting any, anyone in need. Yeah. Anyone. Yeah. Anyone in need. There's projects. There's all sorts of good deeds that you could do. Whether it's financial or not financial. Seize the opportunity. You know, I remember when things were still good in Samarra. I regret the days that I, I didn't yeah. go visit Samarra as much. We would go maybe once every couple of months. Now it's been a couple of years that we haven't been able to go to Samarra because of the security situation. And I regret that, that we didn't seize the opportunity to go and visit al Imamain al Askariyain. Thus, we're taught in Islam, rush, rush. Imam Ali alayhi salam, in his last will, in his last will to his sons, al Hassan and Hussein, and to his followers, alayhi salam. He tells them, Allah, Allah fil Quran, la yasbiquhu bil amali bihi, la yasbiquhum lil amali bihi gayrukum. Allah, Allah bil Quran. Take care of the Quran. Take care of the Quran. Make sure that others don't rush to implement the Quran before you. Others might implement the Quran before you. Be the first to implement the Quran. لا يسبقكم للعمل به غيركم. Don't let others implement the Quran and practice the Quran before you. Yeah. Even in speaking in reward, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, he says, "من قضى لأخيه المؤمن حاجة قضى الله له سبعين حاجة." Whoever uh, fulfills uh, a favor for his brother or sister, for anyone, um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will fulfill seventy of his needs. So the reward is not just you know doing. So, even a small thing to someone, and you'll be, uh, you will be reward by by uh, by a lot. You'll be awarded. And Muhammad Sadiq, peace be upon him, states, "When we go to Salah, as you mentioned, أعرفوا شيعتنا بمحافظة على وقات صلواتهم. Know our Shia and our followers who take care and pray at the right time. On time. On time. On time. Uh, what's the significance behind rushing to Salah?" You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He designated three main times, and this is a, a debate between the followers of Hal Bayt and others mm -hmm. regarding the timings of Salah. We believe that there's three main timings. Mm -hmm. And yes, according to some scholars, if you divide Dhuhr and Asr, it's more recommended. And if you divide Maghrib and Asha, and there's other scholars that know, they say when you finish Dhuhr, Pray Asr right away. When you pray Maghrib, pray Asha right away. We have three main timings for Salah. It's meant to be that way. Yeah. It's meant to be that way. Allah, Salah is a remembrance of Allah. It's a way to stay connected with Allah. Stay connected throughout the day. Throughout the day. Not just once a day. In the morning, at noon, in the afternoon, at sunset, after sunset, or three times, morning, noon, sunset. Remain connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day. There are some people that want to combine their salah all together. All together. They come back from work at five, six o'clock, and they want to pray Dhuhr and Asr, and after maybe 30 minutes, pray Maghrib and Asha. All together. That defeats the purpose. Yeah. That defeats. I get this question all the time. That can we do this? That can we combine our salah all together? The five daily prayers. Okay. When I come back home, I'll pray them all together. I told him, yes, go ahead. With one condition. Pray your salah all together, but with one condition. I want you to have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner all together as well. Can you do that? Why do we have three meals a day? Yeah. 
Why don't we just have three One meals meal. all together? Yeah. The meals give us physical energy. Yeah. You have breakfast in the day, in the morning, to go out to work. It gives you energy. You have lunch to go back to work again. You have dinner to have energy again. We have three meals a day, in order, or there are some people that have two meals a day. Food gives you physical energy. Salah gives you spiritual energy. Or those who charge their, especially those who charge, uh, they talk on the phone a lot and use it a lot, they charge their phones at least two or three times a day. Can you charge your phone three times but one after the other? No, because you charge it once, that's it. You don't need the second charge. You need the second charge when the battery is dead, you charge it, or it's about to die, you charge it again. You charge it a third time. You don't combine them all together. It defeats the purpose. It's pointless. That's how salah is. Salah in the morning is meant to be in the morning. Salah at dhuhr time is meant to be at this hour. Because at this hour you need a spiritual recharge. At night you need the spiritual recharge again. They're meant to be at that time. You see some, they're lazy. They're lazy. They delay their salah. Yeah. They'll never delay their lunch. Their lunch is at, for example, 2 p.m. every day. If lunch is delayed 15 minutes, the world will go upside down. The world will go upside down. But with salah, no. Adhan is at 12. They'll delay salah till 3, till 4. Whenever they're, they're free. After they're done with work with taking a shower, with watching their TV series, when they're done texting all of their friends, if there's time, then we'll do our salah, but very quickly. Is this how salah is meant to be? Salah is not given a priority. Salah, we're meant to rush to our salah. You hear the adhan? Go rush, immediately rush to salah. If you hear, I, I give this example sometimes, when you hear someone knocking at the door, don't you rush? Yeah, no. We rush to see who it is. You don't wait 15, you don't minutes, wait 15 minutes, an hour. Hours. You let someone wait for you behind the door to go and answer the door. When you hear your phone ring, you don't rush. Uh, you rush. You don't wait for an hour, two hours, and then you call back. It's a leave phone. Text messages. The simplest text messages. We have to read them right away. We have to see what's happening. And we have to respond right away. And then we'll get, a, we'll get another text. And we have to respond again. Quickly, we don't wait. We don't let people wait for us. But we, we make Allah wait. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of our salah, we are in need of our salah. Mm -hmm. We are depriving ourselves. We just don't realize it. We don't realize it. Our spirit is hungry for salah. The same way that our bodies are hungry for food, our spirits are also hungry for salah. Some sort of re refreshment. It's, I mean, it's a nutrition. Yeah. It's a spiritual nutrition. And I'd like to emphasize on this subject, especially during the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. I see some people, when it's time for iftar, they forget about Salat al-Maghrib and Asha. They go in immediately and eat. Yeah. And now that, of course, when they eat, they're, they're, full. they're full. Who can pray when he's full? They have to at least relax for a good 30 yeah. minutes, an hour. So Salat al-Maghrib and Asha get delayed for at least an hour. Why? How long does Maghrib and Asha take? More than 15 minutes? Less than 15. Less than 15 minutes. Yeah. Those who fast for 20 hours, the ones that are, that are in Europe, and I feel bad for them. Yeah. Of course, I was in Europe last year, so I know how it feels to fast in Europe. The 20 hour and 21 hour and 19 hour fast. You've already fasted for 19 hours. It's not going to kill you if you delay eating for another 15 minutes and you pray. Yeah. Pray even, Maghrib and Asha. You just break your fast, you know, a date, some water. Break your fast with a date and water yeah. and go pray. Don't delay your salah. Or those who go and pray, but they rush into salah. Salat al Maghrib is, um, I don't even think they know what they're saying because they're. Their mind is with the food. So yeah. they rush immediately with Salat al-Maghrib, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. I don't know how it comes out just to go in and eat. Why? There's a think funny, about it. 
There's a funny excuse. Uh, one time uh, we were at a, a center in Hamilton, Canada, and uh, we see a couple of people praying, and the others, they were eating. They're like, why are you eating and not praying with them? He's like, no, I need the energy to pray. I have no energy in my body. So let me eat and then go pray. That's right. It's only 15 minutes. Yeah. If you could wait for 20 hours, mm -hmm. you could surely wait 20 minutes yeah. or 15 minutes. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ Salah is maghfirah. It's, yeah. it's a means of forgiveness. Allah says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ Rush to forgiveness. Allah will forgive you with salah. And also, um, there's a significant story that goes in, in tie with this. Uh, it's a very well-known story. There's a, a woman who was getting married. And uh, when it came time for salah, she went dead with all took all the makeup off. They asked her, like, what are you doing? You're getting married. You're ruining the makeup. She's like, no, it's time for salah. Now it's time for prayer. After she prayed, she, she died automatically. I mean, subhanallah. subhanallah. And even with the people that say, oh, I'll uh, ask for forgiveness tomorrow. Or after I've done this, I'll, I'll ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me. It's, it's, it's weird to see that. I mean, why don't we take the opportunity now and you know, receive Allah's blessings in this day because we don't know if we're going to receive it uh, tomorrow in the, or in the next hour. But being initiatives, how can one take initiatives in doing good deeds? We have to have a culture of being speedy, mm -hmm. of rushing. You see a good deed, seize the opportunity. You hear of a project, they're not doing so well. Don't wait until they come and ask you for support. Yeah. You know, there, we have a lot of wealthy people in our communities. Everywhere. Alhamdulillah, we follow us of Bayt. We have some well-off people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them, His bounties. There's a lot of projects. There's schools, there's libraries, there's hospitals, there's satellite channels that broadcast the name of Bayt. Orphanages, there's clinics. There's Islamic centers yeah. all over the West. Most of them could use your support. You don't have to wait for them to come and tell you, come and help us. Mm -hmm. Come and support us. Uh, we have a fundraiser. You take the initiative. Yeah. Before they come to you, you rush to them and tell them, here, here's a, a check for a thousand pounds. Here's a check for a thousand dollars. However much. You can't give a thousand, give five hundred. You can't give five hundred, give a hundred. Not even financially. Not, not even financially. Out. If you can give time, you can't yeah. give money, give time. Yeah. Let's be, let's have the culture of speeding, rushing. You see a beggar. Why do we have to have a beggar come and, you know, ask and pour his dignity yeah. in front of us to ask for a, a dinar, two dinars, a dollar, two dollars. You take the initiative. Before yeah. he asks, take some money and put it in his hand. Put it in his pocket. You take the initiative. We don't have this culture. We don't have this culture. We always wait. We always wait to be asked. We're always asked. We never take the initiative. Even at home. Even at home. You see your wife is washing the dishes. She's picking up, especially during Ramadan. Now that she's cooked, now that she's put the, the, meal. the meal, help her at least clean afterwards. Yeah. Don't let her ask. She's done so much you already. You, uh, you, you take the initiative. Yeah. Don't let her nag and ask you for help and complain. You take the initiative. Whether it's at home, whether it's at, at work, whether it's yeah. your local Islamic center, whether it's for your country, take the initiative. Yeah. You be the first. Don't wait for others. See, we have a culture of let someone do this and then I'll be... Yeah. I'll be I'll be next. Why don't you be the leader? Why don't you be the first? Yeah. And others will follow you. We always have this culture that let others start. And if they succeed in, we'll follow. SubhanAllah. We'll follow. Let so-and-so start a project. If it succeeded, we'll start another project. Why? You take the initiative. You start that project. You start that project. We don't have this. We don't have that culture. No. There are some that will come and tell you, no, we have a hadith that say, al-ajalatu min ash-shaytan. That being quick, 
don't rush. Being rushy, being speedy is from shaitan. I tell him, yes. True, this is a hadith. But you've misunderstood it. Yeah, they mix it with other things. You've mixed it with other things. Being speedy for worldly matters. Yeah. In eating. In walking. In doing things that are pointless. In driving. You don't need to, in driving. We see that a lot. In driving. Or always, you, you want to get, you, you want to get to someone's house two hours ahead of time. You want to rush. You want to be the first to eat. You want to be the first to... F no, that's pointless. These are worldly matters. Mm -hmm. When it comes to worldly matters, you don't need to rush. Sometimes rushing will get you in catastrophic... Will get, will, yeah. yeah, will get you in catastrophic results. Take your time and think about it. But not in good deeds. With good deeds, you don't have to think yeah. about it. If you have a thousand dollars that you could easily donate to orphans, does that require yeah. thinking? Is this called Al Ajalatu Minash Shaitan? Praying on time. Is this called Al Ajalatu Minash Shaitan? Yeah. Absolutely not. Going to Hajj this year before seizing the opportunity. This is not Al Ajalatu Minash Shaitan. This is not Shaitan trying to deceive you, telling you to rush. Shaitan will deceive you and tell you to rush about worldly issues. You're on the street, rush, drive. Drive faster. Eat faster. Open your business faster in the morning. No, this is ajalatum al shaitan. When it comes to good deeds, be the first. You be the first. You be the leader. Don't be a follower. Speaking of opportunities, I mean, it's significant, especially in life. There's enormous amounts of opportunities for one, like marriage, any, any opportunity. Um, how do we rush for life opportunities as well as marriage? I think that Islam is and the Quran is teaching us a lesson. Wasar'u ila maghfiratin wastabiqu al khayrat. This teaches us that it's not just when it comes to worship, acts of worship. No, even life's opportunities. You want to start a business. Yes, take your time in planning, but don't be lazy. Don't take your time two, three years and you let opportunities pass, yeah. board, pass by. As you started the presentation with, Imam Ali alayhi salam stated, in tahizu al-furas, fa'innaha tamarru marra al-sahab. Seize opportunities because they will pass by like clouds in the summer. Clouds in the summer. He says clouds, but he means clouds in the summer because clouds in the winter, they're always there. Yeah. Clouds in the winter, they come for 30 minutes, an hour, and they pass by. Seize that opportunity. There's a business opportunity. Go. Go for it. You made your study. You, you did your research. You did your homework. Khalas, don't be indecisive. Don't procrastinate. Go do it. There's, a, there's an opportunity for you to apply to a master's degree. For a master's degree. There's an opportunity to apply for a PhD. There's a Hausa program, for example. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunities. Seize the opportunity. Don't wait. You never know if this opportunity is going to come or not. You never know. When it comes to marriage, when it comes to marriage, there's a lot of people that pass by opportunities. There's a lot of young men, their mothers, they tell them, this is a good lady. She comes from a good family. Yeah. She's religious. He says, no, no, I'm not rushing. I'm sure there's another, third, okay. fourth. He lets these opportunities pass by. He takes his time. He becomes choosy. He becomes picky. He'll look into maybe 10 girls. Ends up not choosing any of them. And he regrets. And the first girl that he had the opportunity of marrying her, she so, got married, she had children, and he's still single. He's still his, regretting that he passed that opportunity. Same thing goes for young ladies. Yeah. They get so many suitors. So many men that come and propose, they're choosing. No, this guy, uh, I don't like his hairstyle. This one, his nose is a bit long. The other one, his, his education does not match my education. The other one, his English, he has an accent. No, I don't. Sorry. I don't like his accent. Sorry to cut you off, but we're coming to a conclusion. Yes. So if you can, uh, for the respected viewers, they requested to do dua. Inshallah, we'll continue with the next episode. Inshallah. Uh, but they requested to do dua uh, for them and for the fighters. 
against ISIS. So if you can, uh, inshallah, begin. I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to support all of our fighters, inshallah, who are fighting against injustice, who are fighting against oppression, against ISIS, the enemy for Muslims and the enemy of the world. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the sacred night, the night of the eve of Friday, Thursday night, and we're in a special place, the Haram of Imam Hussein, in between the Haram of Imam Hussein and the Haram of Ibn Fadl Abbas السلام, to help those who are in need and to support our fighters. And also hasten the reappearance of our, of our and to hasten Imam, the reappearance Imam of Imam Al-Mahdi. Allahumma anshid wa liyik al-faraj waj'alna min ansarihi wa a'wanih wal musashidina bayna liwa'ih. Ameen, ameen. Respected viewers, Sayyidina, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, respected viewers, for uh, tuning in. And you can also join the discussion with Sayyid Hussain Al-Qazwini by asking questions through um, our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and WhatsApp. Uh, so stay tuned for the next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.